Hey board game fans, I have for you today top 10 games for 2021, listed by BoardGameQuest.com, dated December 28th, 2021. Let's get going. Number 10 is The Hunger. According to Andrew, from famed game designer Richard Garfield, The Hunger seems very similar to Clank. A deck builder with a board where you'll use your deck to move around and gather things for points. Now in The Hunger, you aren't collecting treasure, but are instead vampires consuming humans. You have to eat as much as you can, which obviously slows you down a bit, and still make it back to the castle before sunrise if you want a chance to win. Two to six players, ages 10 and up, about 60 minutes of gameplay running around $50. Number nine is Maglev Metro. According to Andrew, engine building and creating routes are among my favorite mechanisms in board games. And that's basically the entirety of Maglev Metro. You'll move passengers around and when they reach their destination, you'll place them on your personal board, powering up your future moves. You can also use them to increase your scoring opportunities, which allows for some interesting decisions about when to keep getting more efficient and when to try to increase your score. It's for one to four players, ages 12 and up, about 60 to 90 minutes of gameplay at about $60. Number eight is Cryo. Andrew tells us, Cryo feels a bit like a lighter version of last year's Dwellings of Everdale. You'll place workers to collect resources, but can use those resource tiles to power up the effects you get when your workers are recalled. See? More engine building. All in the name of gathering your cryopods and getting to the caverns before the sun goes down on this mysterious alien planet and everyone freezes to death. For two to four players, ages 12 and up, about 60 to 90 minutes of gameplay at about Number seven is G.I. Joe Deck Building Game. According to Tony, games based on 80s cartoons are always going to be a hit or miss prospect. But the G.I. Joe Deck Building Game definitely delivers on a cooperative, nostalgia-filled experience. Players control one of the iconic Joe leaders and will recruit other Joes, equipment, and tools to help them thwart the plans of Cobra. While a deck builder is never going to be the most thematic of games, the designer did a great job with this one in making sure that the Joes and even their vehicles call back to their animated counterparts. Yo, Joe! For one to four players, ages 13 and up, about 30 to 60 minutes of gameplay for about $45. Number six is Dinosaur Island, Rar and Right. According to Tony, while tabletop gaming has definitely reached a point of saturation with roll and rights, there appears to still be some room in the genre for up-and-comers. This is where the Dinosaur Island RAR and Right comes in. Players will be managing their own dinosaur-themed park as they breed dinosaurs, construct buildings, and go on dino tours. The designers did an excellent job of distilling the dinosaur world slash island experience down to a light game that plays in about 30 minutes. However, don't let the roll and write name fool you. This is so much more than your dice chucking filler game. Dinosaur Island Rar and Write offers a meaty experience for anyone seeking to run a park with some teeth. For player uh, one to four players, ages 10 and up, about 30 to 45 minutes of gameplay and running about $30. Number five is Bloodborne the board game. According to Tony, while I was never a fan of the Bloodborne video game series, I thought that the board game adaptation was great. Designed by Eric M. Lang and Michael Chennault, Bloodborne the board game has players taking on the role of familiar hunters seeking to uncover the mysteries hidden within the city of Yarnam. The card-driven combat system felt really unique and minimizes the role of luck in the game. And much like its video game counterpart, Games of Bloodborne the board game are anything but easy to win. 
so you need to work together with your fellow teammates if you hope to survive. For 1-4 to four players, ages 12 and up, about 45-75 to 75 minutes of gameplay, running around $120. Number 4 is Descent, Legends of the Dark. According to Tony, I've long been a fan of the Descent line of games, and Descent, Legends of the Dark, is easily my favorite. This app integrated game has players controlling one of six thematic heroes on a quest to save Terranoth. This version is not only completely cooperative, but has all new mechanics, including a great fatigue system that helps ensure that there are very few turns where you have nothing to do. The digital app also tracks all your loot and supplies, which takes a lot of bookkeeping off players' plates. This also allows the game to have a great crafting system where weapons can be upgraded with powers that randomly fire off. For 1-4 to four players, ages 10 and up, about 120 to 180 minutes of gameplay, all for about $140. Number 3 is Batman. The animated series adventures Shadow of the Bat. According to Tony, I was a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles board game, and when I heard that they were porting the system over to the Batman universe, I was all in. This campaign esque game has players taking control of one of over a dozen iconic Batman heroes as they face off against a variety of villains from Batman's Rogue Gallery. The dice as actions mechanic is not only interesting, but having you share roles with other players helps keep the interaction in this game pretty high. Shadow of the Bat can be played either fully cooperative or one versus many, letting you have a different experience depending on your preferred style of play. For 1-5 to five players, ages 12 and up, about 60-90 to 90 minutes of gameplay for about $125. Number two is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. According to Tony, based on their V Commandos line of games comes Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice, a stealth action game that will have you embarking on a series of missions over the course of a lengthy campaign. Up to four assassins will work together to thwart the plans of the Templar Order through stealth exploration and good old-fashioned sword stabbing. Yet Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice is more than a simple dice chucker, as you'll need to plan your actions carefully to avoid the ever-increasing group of guards threatening to get in your way. For 1-4 to four players, ages 12 and up, about 30-90 to 90 minutes of gameplay, all for about $240. And number 1, Chronicles of Drunagor, Age of Darkness. According to Tony, Despite my love of dungeon crawler board games, I actually don't own very many. It's just been hard to find one that I really love, and I've played a lot of them. Descent, listed above, is one such game that made the cut. However, Chronicles of Drunagor has become my absolute favorite. Not only did it release with a wealth of unique characters to try, but it has a compelling story, elevated terrain, and unique mechanics. You can even multi-class your character when you level up. There is a ton to explore in Chronicles of Drunagor. With a thematic campaign that will have you embarking on a large variety of missions. The monsters are handled via a simple AI card system that helps keep games moving and the action fierce. And for those players concerned about replay value, the door system has been opened again to allow any players to create their own room contents by scanning a QR code. For fans of the dungeon crawling genre, this one is not to be missed. For 1-5 to five players, ages 14 and up, about 120 minutes of gameplay, all for about $110. There are two authors to the article, so there were more games listed that I did not include in this video. If you'd like, go to BoardGameQuest.com and search out the article to read more details. Thank you for watching.